Once again, images from the JWST telescope have caused surprise and consternation among most cosmologists. The latest discoveries, whose announcement was made at the end of February, were so surprising to the scientists that discovered them that one of them, Dr. Joel Leia, called these new galaxies universe breakers. Well, not to worry. The universe won't be harmed by a few new images. These galaxies can be more accurately described as theory breakers because they are delivering big new blows against the dominant theory of the evolution of the universe, which is the Big Bang Theory. I and my colleague Dr. Ricardo Scarpa were not surprised at the discovery of these galaxies because back in June of last year, we predicted in a paper published online that just such galaxies would be discovered by JWST. The reason that these galaxies were so surprising to most cosmologists is that they looked a lot like the galaxies that we see around us in our own neighborhood in the universe. In fact, quite a bit like the galaxy that we live in, the Milky Way. For one thing, these galaxies, which in their theory were observed only 600 million years after the Big Bang, 3% of the supposed present age of the universe, even though these were galaxies viewed in supposedly a baby universe, they were mature, large galaxies. They were galaxies with the mass of the Milky Way galaxy. And there just wasn't time in their theories for such large galaxies to develop. But that wasn't the worst problem. The worst problem is how these galaxies appear, their color. Because just as you can judge the age of a human being by their appearance, you can judge the age of the stars in a galaxy by their colors. They expected to find young galaxies that would be very blue, violet, even blazing in the ultraviolet. But these new galaxies were glowing in the yellow and the green, just like the appearance of our own Milky Way galaxy. In fact, just like the appearance of our own sun. That meant that the stellar populations in these galaxies were billions of years old. They were triple the age of the universe, supposedly, at this time. Well, if you have galaxies that are demonstrably two billion years old in a universe that started 600 million years ago, well, the universe didn't really start then, and the Big Bang didn't really happen. So that's why there's a big kerfuffle over these new galaxies. So let me explain why scientists can be very confident that color corresponds to age in galaxies. Scientists have a really good understanding how stars produce energy and how they evolve because it's based on our knowledge of nuclear reactions, the fusion reactions that fuel the energy supply in our own sun and in all the stars. We know about these things because we've done millions of experiments on nuclear reactions in the laboratory. It's not like we have a perfect theory of the nature of the nuclear force. But we've done such precise experiments that we know how fast these reactions go at various temperatures, pressures, and various conditions that exist in stars. So from that, we know that stars evolve at very different rates depending on their mass. The 
bigger the star, the more mass of the star, the hotter it gets inside and the faster it burns its fuel. This is such a pronounced correlation that a star that is 10 times the mass of our sun will burn its fusion fuel a thousand times faster than our sun does. And that means it will run through its supply of fuel, which is bigger, a hundred times faster. So these big stars will be very, very bright, but they will burn through their fuel and cease to exist either as supernova or as white dwarfs in tens or hundreds of millions of years, not the billions of years that a medium-sized star like our sun lasts. So this means that since galaxies begin with a mix of bigger and smaller stars, a young galaxy's light is going to be dominated by the light of these big, fast-burning stars. Now, how does that link to color? Well, scientists know even more rigorously that the temperature of an object is linked to its color. This is basic laws of thermodynamics discovered at the end of the 19th century. The hotter an object, the bluer it looks. So, in a young galaxy dominated by young stars, the spectrum is going to be dominated by light in the ultraviolet part, which we as humans can't see, but our instruments can, and in the blue part of the spectrum. So, the spectrum plotted intensity against wavelength with the wavelength on the left being ultraviolet and on the right being uh, green light, looks kind of like this for a very young galaxy. This would be a galaxy that's about 400 million years old, shining brightly in the ultraviolet. As a galaxy ages, these bright stars burn themselves out. They disappear, and the stars that remain are the smaller, older stars, which are cooler and thus more to the red part of the spectrum. In a galaxy that is two billion years old, these bright ultraviolet stars have already burned themselves to cinders, and the peak is over here on the right side of the graph in the green. Now that's where our own star, the sun, shines. It looks yellow because that's what uh, our eyes make of the range of uh, wavelengths of light that the sun emits. If we could see on a dark night what the color of the Milky Way is on our skies, our eyes are not sensitive to color at these low levels, it would be pretty much looking like the sun, sort of yellowy. So that's what a two billion year old galaxy looks like. Now, let's take the biggest and most surprising of the galaxies that was discovered by JWST. I've plotted the data that I got from the author's own paper in the same way that these models are plotted. As you can see, if you try to make this galaxy look like a young galaxy, well, it doesn't, the data doesn't fit the predictions at all. But if you try and match it up with a galaxy that's two billion years old, it's a pretty good fit. So that's the big surprise to them, because to understand galaxies look, that look like this, as 600 million year old galaxies is actually a lot harder than to convince you that I'm 25, which would be a third of my actual age. Now, in reaction to these new discoveries, a lot of scientists 
in this field are still holding on to the Big Bang hypothesis and to expansion. And they're trying to save this hypothesis by throwing out some portion of the present detailed understanding of that Big Bang theory, which is called the Lambda CDM model, the model that you've probably heard of with inflation and dark energy and dark matter and all this stuff. So some scientists are trying to throw overboard some of these hypotheses and arrive at a new form of the Big Bang that would not contradict these new observations. Well, that's really not going to work because these new observations put into the context of all the observations we've already discussed about the contradictions of the predictions of the Big Bang pretty much rule out any theory in which the universe began 13 billion years ago in a hot, dense state. And I kind of suspect some of these scientists are actually reaching these conclusions, even though they're not willing to say so right now. I mean, after all, what does Dr. Leia mean by universe-breaking galaxies? He's surely not talking about dark matter or dark energy breaking. He's talking about something that's a challenge to the dominant theory of the evolution of the universe, I suspect. Now, the number of scientists who have publicly said that the JWST images refute the expanding universe model is small, but it is growing. Back in December, Dr. Nikita Lovyagin and colleagues published in the peer-reviewed journal Galaxies an analysis very similar to the one that Dr. Scarpa and I did of the sizes of the images of galaxies in the JWST data. And they did the same basic comparison of these sizes with the predictions of the Big Bang-based illusion that galaxies should grow in apparent size with distance rather than shrinking. And they reached the exact same conclusion, that these data were, in their words, incompatible with the predictions of the expanding universe model. So we think that this debate is going to develop quite rapidly as more and more data comes in from the JWST. But the conclusion that we draw from the universe breaker, or more rightly, theory breaker of galaxies, is that the universe is just fine, but that the Big Bang theory is dead. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for further developments.